Chodesh Tov Rabotai. Gaon Vilna says, what's the significance of Rosh Chodesh? That a person gets Neshama Yetera. That's why we do Musaf. Every time there's a Musaf, there's Neshama Yetera. What does that mean? A little bit of an extra soul we get. So says the Gaon Vilna, what's the purpose of the Neshama Yetera that you get for Rosh Chodesh? What's the purpose of that? The purpose is, is to make Hidushim in Torah, to make new, new ideas in Torah, novel ideas. So we can, we can try to say some Hidushim now, right? A little bit in Torah. To fulfill the... Uh, Explanation of the Gaon Vilna. Uh, so yesterday we were talking about the issue of uh, right, uh, if you have to pay a person on time when he works. We talked about this, you know, and uh, we said we were going to continue talking about it a little bit more because there was a couple more details that I wanted to fill you in on. As we said, right, that if a person doesn't pay uh, the worker on time, we're talking about a Jewish worker, by the way. We're not talking about a good. Right? When the Torah tells you to pay him on time, you know, the, the night after or the day or whatever, talking about a Jew. If you have a Goyesha employee, there's no obligation to pay him right away like that, you know, uh, within the, the next night or whatever. There's no, no such a thing like that. It's only for Jewish people, this, this whole thing. You know, we're brothers, we have to do each other for, each, for each other. Like the Torah says, right, that's, that's one thing, right? First of all, you have to understand. Number two, also, it's interesting, right? The Shulchan Ruch says something interesting, very, very fascinating about this. That if, you know, although that a person has to pay on time, as a, as a, there's a pasuk, right? Right? It says, give him prayer on, on the same day that he worked. That's a positive commandment. It says also, right, so that's a negative commandment. So we have a positive, negative, a person who transgresses this, as we said yesterday, is transgressing a positive commandment, and also, which is the negative commandment. So can you imagine? As we said, right, it's pretty severe. But nevertheless, right, this only applies when, it only applies when the, the, the worker comes and asks you for the money, right? He tells you, okay, my friend, I worked for you, right? Uh, we did a good job today. We uh, scaffolded your walls, right? Whatever, God knows, whatever, right? We did some things. Okay, so you ready to pay me now, right? You said you were going to pay me today $150, right, for the job. So you ready to pay me? Uh, once he asks you, then you already have to pay him, as we said yesterday. But if he didn't ask you, he didn't come and ask you, you know? He just like left, you know? Let's say he just went home, you know? <laughs> he was tired. He was too tired to ask you for money. You know, he forgot about it. You know, sometimes it happens, right? The people are so tired after they work, they forget about everything. So if he didn't ask you, says the Shulchan Aruch, you don't transgress yet. There's no transgression. Transgression only comes after he asks you for the money. So as long as he didn't ask you, you're okay, you know? Uh, you know, I remember I'll tell you an interesting story, right? When I was in Yerushalayim, Learning in the Kolel of Maran, Rabbi Shalom. What happened was that there was one guy over there, a nice uh, boy who was learning in the Kolel there, nice guy. I called him a boy because he was younger than me, but he was a ref, he was already married. So what happened was that he, uh, he came to me one day and uh, he said, you know, do me a favor. He says, I'm short on money. Can you lend me 200 shekels? You know, which is like $60, right? Whatever. Well, that's pretty much what it is today. Right? Whatever. So I, I told him, I said, no problem, my friend, I'll lend you. I took out, you know, there's like a bill, 200 shekel bill. It's like a red color, you know? Looks like a ruble, I don't know, whatever, right? <laughs> so I took it out, I said, okay, here, take it, you know, no problem, you know? Uh, you're short on money, you know? No problem, you know? It's a, big, it's a very big mitzvah to lend your friend, your fellow Jew money when he needs it, right? That's also another mitzvah. It's a very important mitzvah. If you, if you can lend him, make sure you do it, you know? Because if you don't, and you have the money, right? You, you did a sin over there, but also when you lend him, it's a very big mitzvah. You get blessed for that, right? Hashem will bless you for all these things. I know, by the way, some people in our community, you know, one, I have like one or two people in mind. What they do is every time, you know, I'm talking about the old days, you know, in the past, and I don't know what's going on now. They're already old. Maybe already some of them are already not alive anymore, but the point is, right, that uh, when somebody would need a loan, they would always give him, you know, I remember, you know, they were like always, they were always there. Oh, you know, it's a, uh, you know, I'll give you anything, whatever you want, right? You know? What did you get? You know, how you asking that? Ah, you know, like the Georgians, you know, they're big-hearted people. You know, they have big hearts. I like that. 
It's a good thing about the Georgian people, you know? Sometimes when you need the money, they give you. So, you know what it is? You know, I saw that those people who were lending money to their fellow, fellow Georgians, whatever, these community, they all got rich, you know, because of this. I tell you, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing that a person, you know, was able to do that, lending his fellow Jew money. I'm telling you, you know, try it and you'll see. You know, when you do it like this, you know, if you're, you're habitual about it, you're systematic with it, you will get a lot of blessing from there, from this, uh, from this mitzvah. It's a great, great mitzvah. They say, right, the Chazal, that lending money to a Jew is even greater than giving him tzedakah. It's even greater. Wow. What's the reason why? Anybody know? Because you give a lot of mom. Tzedakah, you put five down. For this, two thousand, five thousand. So give him a lot of tzedakah. <laughs> give him a lot. <laughs> What's the problem? That's not the reason. You know what the reason is? Chazal say, the reason why it's better to give a loan than to give tzedakah is because when you give him tzedakah, you're embarrassing him. You know, like, yeah, yeah, okay, you know. Matchowari, matchowari, you know. Eh. Poor guy, pauper, you know? You're embarrassing him, you know? You're making him look like a, like a schlepper, you know? Like a, you know, like a miskin, you know? Like somebody who's, uh, right? But when you give him a loan, he's like, no, you're treating him like a businessman, you know? Oh, okay, you know, take someone. Like, he's like a businessman, you know? He needs a loan to, to, to keep his business going, you know? So that's more respectable, you know? More like mechubad, you know? You know, so that's the thing. That's why it's better to give him a loan, because you're not embarrassing him like that. You know, they say, by the way, that because of that, it's better, you know, if somebody needs money, right? Let's say, you know. And you know that he's embarrassed to ask you for tzedakah, you know? You know, Georgians are very proud people, right? They don't want to ask for tzedakah, you know? Who does that, right? Only a few, very, very few Georgians, you know? They, they're proud, you know? They don't want to ask for tzedakah. They want to be reliant on Hashem. That's how Georgians are, you know? It's true, right? you know that, right? I don't have to tell you. Most of them, most of the Georgians are like that. If you know? they don't pay you? So, <laughs> that's a different story, but I want to tell you, right, that before we get to that issue, Okay. Right? What happens is like this, you know, that if you know somebody who's I'm embarrassed to ask day. you, he's a Georgian, you know, Georgian Trust type, me. you know, like, you know, he's, ah, oh, he won't ask you for money. 99%. But you know that I he needs it. Paid. Right? You, need, you know that he needs staka. Poor guy, right? He's suffering. He can't pay his bills. Aye. You know? So what do you do? If you don't want to embarrass him, you know, you want to treat him nice, what do you do? Tell him, you know, oh, I'll, I'll lend you money. You know, lend him money. Don't, don't say it's staka. You know? Say it's a loan. You know what I mean? So... He'll, you know, if you tell him it's a loan, he'll take it maybe, you know, more, because he's not going to be embarrassed. You know what I mean? So what happens is like this, you know, but in your mind, what you should think is like this, you know? What, what should be your kavanah? Your kavanah should be, you know what? I'll give, him, I'll give him the money now. I'll say it's a loan, but I'll never ask him for that money again, right? In other words, I give up on that, right? I never tell. You know that he, you don't even want to ask him for this, but he called it a loan not, in order not to embarrass him. Right, that's that's the thing, you know. So that's a big, very big mitzvah, you know. That a person does it this way, not to embarrass his fellow Jew. He calls it a loan instead of calling it a tzedakah, right? Whatever, you know. So, but he doesn't really want to get that money back. He's not interested in getting it back. So, when I, getting back to what we said, right? That I remember when we were in the yeshiva over there, the one avrech, as we said, that he needed money, so I gave it to him. No problem, you know. Two hundred shekels. What is it? It's nothing, you know. Sixty dollars. You know, eh? You know, what's, what's the big deal? So what happened was that. He told me, he said, you know, I'll give it back to you like in a certain amount of time. I don't know, two days, one week, whatever. I don't remember what they told me. I don't recall, you know. But what happened was, right, that I saw him after that time. You know, like every day I used to see him because we married. We're in the same yeshiva, you know what I mean? So what happened was that after the time passed away, he was supposed to pay me back, you know. So what did I do, you know? I didn't go to him and tell him, okay, where's my money, you know. Okay, didn't you tell me you're going to pay me in a week? What happened? You know, I didn't tell him this. You know, because I didn't want to embarrass him. I could see on his face he was embarrassed already. Just to see me, he was embarrassed. Okay. So what did I do? I, I, didn't, I just shut my mouth and said nothing. You know, I said, hey, how are you? Hi. <laughs> like nothing happened, you know? I'm a pair of That's what I did, you know? So what did I do? I waited, I waited, you know? One week, two weeks, three weeks. In the end, he paid me, you know? I just didn't have the money. I'll come you. You know, what can I do? Right? This is the way it is, you know? So that's a very good thing that a person does it this way. You know what I mean? That he does, he's not always, you know, coming in to embarrass his friend. You know, ah, where's the money? Where's the money? You get, what, don't you know? Where's the money? He doesn't have it. If he has it, he'll pay you. What, what's wrong with you? What, your hair's not working? You know, so relax a little bit, you know, have a little sabranut, a little patience. You know, and he'll pay you, don't worry. Unless he's a rasha, you know. That's something else. We're not talking about rasha. Right? Most people are not like rasha, you know, like this, you know. When they borrow, they usually pay you back. Most people are like that, you know, most, most Jewish people. That's the way they are. They're embarrassed to, to, to steal your money. They don't want to do that. Even though they're not so religious, you know, they don't, uh, you know, they're not big scholars, Torah, but, uh, but when it comes to money, they know, you know, you take, you have to give back. They know that. 
Everybody knows that. You know, so you're not teaching him something new. So why do I tell you that, right? Because it's the same thing over here. That as we said, right, that once a person works for you and he, now you owe him the money. So if he wants to be a nice guy, you know, and he like kind of feels like you don't have the money now to pay him. So what should he do? Don't even ask, you know, just go home and wait. You know, he'll pay you eventually, you know. What, what do you think? He hired you for free? You know, he doesn't have the money right now. So if you can be a little bit patient, you know, wait for him. Because once you ask him for the money and he doesn't give you, he's transgressing already the Isu, you know, the, the Torah. So therefore, you know, if you want to be a tzaddik, you know, somebody who's more, you know, tzaddik, you know, you know, you want to be like this, don't ask him for the money. You know, just wait a little bit. You know, he doesn't, you can see in his face, you know, he doesn't have it. You know the guy, he's not a crook. How much is the liquor? Wait, wait. Hey, you know, listen, you know, it depends on, God, God, you know, it depends on your, your patience, you know, Ramdani is a sabdanuti you know. You know, every person has a different uh, character, you know. But that's how he's, how he's Ten years? Ten years? Ten years? <laughs> ten years? Ten years? <laughs> well, if you wait for ten years, you must I be never the ask. Of never the, ask. You're the biggest subject of the, of, the, of the country. You know, never the, ask. Huh? Just yeah. waiting. Yeah, it's up to you, you know, that's up to you. I mean, but the truth is that there is a <laughs> Not 200 seconds. <laughs> I wish it was 200. <laughs> so you know what it is, right? That there is actually halakha like this. Never you know, ask for freaking money. There is a halakha. You know what it says? That if a person owes you money, right? He owes you money. But you can, you know for sure that he doesn't have it yet to pay you. You know, I don't So you're not allowed to go to him and say, where's my money? You cannot say, you're not allowed to do that. Because you know he doesn't have it, right? If you know, tweets him. You know, he doesn't have the money. So what are you going to him and asking him for the money? What, do you want to embarrass him? No, all you're doing is embarrassing him. You know, that puzzle, you know? The man. What, what, what is that for? What's the purpose of that? If you know that he doesn't have it, just be quiet and wait. This is exactly what we're talking about. Understand? So the uh, same thing applies to loans. Same thing applies also to wages as well. right? So there's no difference. It's all the same. Uh, so sometimes a person has to have a little bit of patience. Whatever, you know. The more you have, the better it is. Hashem. Rabbi, you know, Hashem, you? Hashem won't, won't look. You know, you, you know what the Shulchan Aruch says? I want to tell you before you say right? What do you, you want to say? Yeah. The Shulchan Aruch says that nobody ever lost anything in his life by giving tzedakah. You know, nobody. There's no loss. You never lose by giving tzedakah. Never. You, know, you always gain. You know, there's no such a thing like that. You gain tzedakah, but and it came out bad for you? No such a thing. Hashem will bless you for sure. No such a thing like that. Yeah, what did you want to say? I'm sorry. I wanted to say if you see the person that owes you money, yes. I guess it, Al Mutarot. Oh. <laughs> now we get into. It's an interesting discussion, by the way, what you're saying. I, I was hoping you weren't going to say that he uses, uses for drugs, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, God forbid, God forbid. Mutarot. <laughs> mutarot, <laughs> Fanny Bahai, right, right. right. Lobby Kashi. The truth is, you know, there's also halacha about this, you should know, by the way. The yeah. There's a halacha like this. You know what it says? That if, if you know a person, right, and he lives, you know, like a high lifestyle, you know, he's, he used to be rich, right? Vidari, you know? So he, he used to live like, you know, a king, you know what I mean? He was driving a Bentley, you know, and uh, he had a fancy house in Long Island, a uh, vacation home in Florida. He had, you know, he was a rich guy, you know? And then, Dawada, you know, he fell down. You know what I'm saying? He lost his fortune, right? He, he lost that, he's lost his shirt, you know what I mean? So right? they say that when you give tzedakah to a person like this, he's now poor. He doesn't have nothing, right? When you give him tzedakah, you have to give him according to the level that he lives on, he used to live on before. Can you imagine? You have to give him like he used to be. Why? Because if you give him like you know regular regular guy, he can't live like that. You know, for him this is like this is like disaster. You know, like, you know he can't he can't live like that. Right? So okay. if a person used to be rich like this, we have to give him like if we can. You know, if we have enough to do that, right? Like he used to live before to live like that. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. You know. What if so. Uh, <laughs> what if you can give him the amount? I'm sorry. If you can give, you can give him money, how he wants it for you? Just give him. We do the best we can, you know? What, what can we do, right? Uh, the, we're talking about that you have a lot of deep, deep pockets, you know what I mean? Otherwise, you can't do things like this, right? Uh, today, we don't, we're barely even uh, supporting people to eat, you know, sometimes. Uh, we can't even do that, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, it depends on the situation, right? Everything according to the situation. But this is the halakha. You know what I mean? That a person has to be like this. So, uh, as we said, right, that uh, a person, if he didn't ask you yet for the money, 
you still don't transgress the prohibition of you know, paying him late, as long as he didn't ask you. There's another interesting halakha, which is taught also uh, there in the Shulchan Ruch. Also very interesting. You know what it is? That sometimes a person doesn't have the money right, to pay his uh, worker. You know, as we said, right, sometimes he doesn't have it. So now, right, he wants to find some kind of a trick, you know, like, to, like as if he paid him, you know, like, even though he really didn't, you know. He wants, to, he wants to look like he paid him. You know what I mean? So I'll give you an example, right, what, what, what's brought down the Shulchan Ruch. For instance, you know, he takes him to the, uh, some, you know, some rich guy, whatever, right, some money changer, right, some, you know, khalfan, you know, something like this, right? And he tells the khalfan, you know, he t- tells the money changer, right, some guy who has money, a lot of cash, he has a lot of cash. So he tells him, you know, like, will you pay this guy? Will you obligate yourself to pay this guy? If I don't pay him, will you pay him? So if he agrees, you know, to pay him, because, you know, he wants to just, you know, help you out. He wants to help you. You know, he wants to be a nice guy. You know how it is. People do favors for each other, right? So if he obligates himself to, to pay, you don't transgress anymore this prohibition. Because now the guy is, you know, he feels safe. Why? Because somebody promised to pay him. You know what I mean? Somebody, uh, you know, so like he feels okay, you know, he feels secure. So therefore, that's also another way, you know, to get out of it. You know what I mean? If you, if you can get somebody to, to obligate himself, you know, to, to pay the guy, this way he'll feel safe, you're okay, you don't transgress. Another way is like this, you know. Uh, you can see from this halakha, by the way, there's also another trick you can do, which is that if you don't have the cash, you know what people do, right, when they don't have cash, they give checks, you know what I mean? As if, like, you know, even though they don't have money in the bank yet, they give like a post-dated check, you know what I mean? Check dachuf, you know, dachui, dachui, right? Dachui. So, uh, you give a post-dated check, you know, one week, two weeks, you know what I mean? And you're hoping that you're going to have the money then, you're expecting that the money will come in, you know? So if you want to give him a check, even though right now he can't cash that money, you know? But since he has something in his hand, obligation, you know? He feels secure, you know? So that's, that's also good. You can do it this way, it's, it's fine. You know, you're not transgressing anymore. You know what I mean? So give him a check. You know, if you can't give him cash, so you'll feel, you know, like, okay, I got something. You know, like, I'm, I'm safe. So this is also uh, a good way to do it. It's a loophole. Okay. It's, yeah, I mean, you know, it's whatever you want to call it. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, right? It is what it is, right? As we said, right? So you're giving him a, you're giving him a check, and he feels, uh, he feels safe. Okay, very good. So, also, I want to talk a little bit about something else, which I was asked uh, a couple of minutes, regarding the issue of, um, there's a person, like, you know, who asked me that he made, like, a soup. So, the soup has bread inside, you know, they, they cook the soup with bread inside, you know, like, uh, pieces of bread, slices of bread, you know. So, the question is, Actually. what's the bracha? For a soup like this, you, know, uh, you understand? It's got bread inside. This is the question. You know, so the truth is that there's a Shulchan Uch about this. What kind of Shulchan Uch? <coughs> it says the Shulchan Uch like this. If the bread was cooked, like we have here, the soup, right? Soup was cooked. You know? So the bread is cooked there. So what's the halacha? What's the, what's the, what's the din? What's the blessing on cooked bread? Let's say it was cooked in a soup, or you made, let's say, French toast out of it, right? With eggs, you know? It's also cooked. Same thing, right? Doesn't make any difference. You fry it, you boil it, it's all the same. So what's the bracha? So says the Shulchan Ruch, if the pieces in the, in, right, are, are bigger than kazait, you know, which is like half an egg, you know? If they're bigger than a kazait, then you make hamosi. That means you have to wash your hands, too. You have to wash your hands, too. Understand? If they're smaller than kazait, you know, like crumbs, you know, like uh, croutons, you know, yeah. like, right? So there, it's, it's mezanot, exactly, right? So it depends on the size, you know? So what are we talking about here? We're talking about when they're cooked. If they're, if they're not cooked, it's always hamosi, no matter what. It doesn't make any difference. But here, since the bread was cooked, so it depends on the size, you know? So same thing with the French toast, right? That if you have French toast, and you, each one is kazait, you know? Like, in other words, it's like one slice of bread. Is one slice of bread kazait? For sure. You know, it's, it's, it's not half an egg. For sure it is. Right? So if you have one slice of bread with French toast, what's the bracha for that French toast? Hamotzi. Right? That's the halacha. Right? 
So when is it going to be in Mezonot? Only if they're broken up into little pieces, you know? Less than Kazait. Then it's going to be Mezonot. Another interesting thing, right, which comes also from this halakha, is that, what about matzo ball soup, right? What's going on with that? Everybody likes matzo ball soup, right? We all like it. You know, we like to have it on Pesach, whatever, even sometimes not on Pesach. So what's the halakha? Is it Mezonot or is it Hamutzi? Those matzo balls. That's the question, right? So the truth is, what is matzo ball? It's made out of ground matzot, you know? It's ground up, tapkulia, you know? And then they make it into a ball with eggs, you know, with oil, and they put it together, you know? And they make balls out of it, right? That's the way it works. So, according to what we said, what do you think, huh? Should it be hamotzi or mezonot? Mezonot. Mezonot. You say mezonot, huh? Okay, anybody, any other uh, takers? <laughs> you say hamotzi, okay, well. Okay. I want to get both sides. <laughs> Makes me feel better. So, what's the halakha then, right? The halakha is that it's mezonot. Ah, but the matzo balls are big, right? They're pretty big. They're bigger than kazait. You know what? They're not half an egg. For sure they are. So then why is it mezonot? Huh? So uh, it's cooked. Yeah, it's cooked in the water. Okay, so what? It's not exactly Ah, what do you say, Abba? You know what the answer is? The answer is like this. It was cooked already. Huh? It was cooked already. Yeah, for sure it was cooked. But we said, right, depends on the size anyway. Right? So what's, what's the what's halakha? What's the reason why? The reason why it's mezonot is because it was already ground into small pieces. Yeah. Now that they put it together, that's not really the size. You understand? The size was little crumbs. That was the size. It is, matzo meal is matzo. That's what it is. It's, it's matzo flour, basically. That's what it is, right? Oh, so he, you're talking about farfel, right? What the Ashkenazim call farfel, right? We call this lapta, lapta, you know, the Georgians. You know, we make this, right? With, we fry it with oil, you know, it's like, like bread. You also make it? You also? Okay, so we call it lapta, you know, whatever. So what's the bracha for lapta? Mezonot or hamotzi? Mezonot, exactly. Why? Because each piece is still smaller than a kazait. Even though they put it together, you know, with the eggs and everything, right? But those little pieces, farfel, they call it, right? The Ashkenazim, they call it farfel. Each one is smaller than kazait. Right, but you know what it is? They put it together with, with yeah. eggs, you know. And the, but each piece, really, yeah. originally, is smaller than kazait. So therefore, the bracha of lapta, right, we call it lapta. That is mezonot, not hamotzi. Baruch Adonai le'olam, amen, amen. Rebbe Chanan, Hashem, Yitzhak, 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 Amen. Amen.